Oh, what's it like to see a tornado? It's an incredibly exhilarating experience. The first tornado that we saw on 22nd May 1981 formed and dissipated in the classic style. It began as a whirl of dust underneath the wall cloud. Soon the condensation funnel began to form and then connect with the dust whirl. The tornado assumed a rather sinuous or elephant trunk type of shape as it went across wheat fields. In fact, there were times when the red dirt from the fields were sucked up all the way to cloud base and the tornado was just enshrouded in a, uh, a red cylinder. It's a display of nature, which is extremely rare, extremely violent, something which not too many people have seen. It's very fleeting. Getting this close to one of nature's most awesome performances is an amazing accomplishment. Over a possible range of 125,000 square miles, the chasers wound up here at precisely the right time. The morning of May 12, 1985. The first stop for the chase team is here at the lab, where weather data from many sources are pooled together. It's possible that what we'll do is we'll get an occlusion, dry line coal front occlusion out on the border to something. The graduate students, guided by Bob Davies Jones, become detectives. They piece together clues that might tell them exactly where, within their 200 mile range, tornadoes may appear later in the day. The Doppler system can see a tornado about 20 minutes in advance. But the chasers must gaze hours into the future, so they can be there when the action takes place. I'm scared about going south. The stuff that the wave lifts north. It's a long drive. Several miles away at Oklahoma University, Howard Bluestein and his crew are making similar choices. For Howie, this is a fascinating process of weaving together the atmosphere's intricate and sometimes obscure patterns. Intercepting severe thunderstorms is partly a science and partly an art. We know we need potential instability, moisture, but these conditions often persist over broad regions. The trick, and I say trick, is to try to determine over what localized regions will the severe thunderstorms actually occur. At this point, the forecasting becomes somewhat of an art. People who look at weather maps day after day after day notice that certain events seem to be correlated with the formation of severe thunderstorms. What I like to do is take some of this art noticing that there are certain relationships in the weather map uh, between certain features and the occurrence of severe weather and then after the fact going and trying to determine why uh, these features are related to severe thunderstorm activity good morning we have an interesting severe weather situation developing today also on may 12th the same large-scale weather patterns are being monitored at the national severe storms forecast center in kansas city the strong subtropical jet runs across Texas, and the polar jet comes across Kansas and Iowa. The job of these meteorologists is to predict severe weather anywhere in the continental United States and alert the public by issuing a watch. Right now, they notice an explosive situation in Tornado Alley. In this satellite image, the red shows a sharp contrast between moist air near the ground and dry, cool air above it. The atmosphere is potentially very unstable. Tornadoes could form anywhere along a 300-mile dry line, running from Oklahoma City down to Wichita Falls and Abilene, Texas. The question for the chasers is how far south to go. The answer in Howie's mind, not far at all. His plan is to watch for storms just south of Oklahoma City. I hope so. I checked the room. Did you hit the other light? But if storms become severe down in Texas, he wants to be in position to go after them. I think our winds are backsliding. Leaving shortly after noon, Lou and Lance have committed themselves to going south all the way to Texas. The entire year's research depends on data they collect in these few short weeks. But this season, tornadoes have been fewer than usual, making the race against time and distance even more critical. Conditions change so quickly, the teams need to stay in contact with the lab. 
Within 50 miles of Norman, they communicate by radio. But once out of range, they're forced to pull off the road and just use the phone. I'm, I'm a little bit worried about something happening uh, right back uh, just south of Norman. We're seeing a little uh, towering queue and small CBs building up under the anvil from the Wichita Falls storm. But uh, the echo development is still weak. I don't think that's anything that would command that you turn back and head back into Oklahoma. I think you should still head southwest toward the Wichita Falls storm. Okay, I think that this activity here uh, appears to be going downhill. And if anything does come up from uh, southwest of Wichita Falls, we'll have plenty of time to get it. Okay, Howie, well, good luck. Thanks, bye-bye. What are we doing? So, uh, We're going to go west. It, it's still not exactly clear what's happening. Thunderstorms are breaking out southwest of Wichita Falls, and the weather service is considering uh, putting out a watch. When Howie learns that storms have started to go up in Texas, he decides to move a little further south. The situation in Oklahoma doesn't look promising. Still, his instinct tells him, stay close to home. Yeah, go west in 29 to Marlow, and then we can drop south to Duncan, and we can be in good position for any storms that are popping up down here. But I still don't have that much faith in it. How far southwest of Wichita Falls are the thunderstorms? Archer City. That's not it's off the map here, but it's about 30 miles from, from Wichita Falls, something like that. It's where the last picture show was filmed. <laughs> Three twenty-five p.m. In Kansas City, the Severe Storms Forecast Center issues a watch for northern Texas. Yeah, it's Fort Worth. This is Kansas City. It seems that the uh, development around Abilene is going to become severe soon, and we probably should issue a severe thunderstorm watch. And what we have uh, indicated here is a watch that extends 60 miles east. And if dangerous weather materializes, it's up to the local branch of the Weather Service to warn the public. Lou and Lance are heading for the watch area, hoping to get Toto there in time. They make a quick decision, gambling on a shortcut to Wichita Falls. For storm chasers driving long distances over unfamiliar roads, the risk of getting lost is ever-present. Are you looking southeast or southwest, Lou? I'm looking southeast. West. West. Southwest, Lou. No, I'm looking over there. That's southwest. We're going no, to, it isn't. It's east of the road, and the road goes southwest. We're going south right now. What are you saying? That's southwest. That's southeast. This road goes southwest. This road. Hold on, Bob. South. I've got a, a direction oh, problem 65 here. 65 going south. We're not on 65 yet. Yeah, we are. Four thirty p.m. Howie is still in Oklahoma, about 70 miles from the lab and 50 miles from the Texas border. Look he spots a cloud that has broken the, uh, through the cap and is widening at the base. It could be the start of a thunderstorm. Of that tower. We have somewhat of a dilemma right now. We're right along the back side of the deep moisture. Uh, we've been measuring the temperature and dew point outside the car. You can see the edge of the clouds right over here. The towering cumulus cloud went up. Uh, looked very good, looked as if it might become a thunderstorm, but then it uh, died. We also have a thunderstorm way off in the distance to the southwest, somewhere near Wichita Falls. And we really don't know whether that particular thunderstorm is getting the deep moisture or not. But what we really need to do right now is to get a telephone, call back to the lab, and find out what the storms to the southwest look like on radar. Hello, Oklahoma City. We are uh, seeing development of severe thunderstorms across the Red River into Oklahoma now, and we think that the activity will develop towards Oklahoma City, and so we propose... There's now a tornado watch that includes both Oklahoma City and Wichita Falls, Texas. It's 7 p.m. Howie must commit to one of these options. New cells are forming right along here. They're just not very well organized and I'm going to try to see whether or not any of the storms which we passed by to our west earlier are, uh, are coming up. Tornado watch. Howie learns from the lab's radar that the Oklahoma storms are still weak while the Texas storms continue to build. Let's go a little bit further. Let's get suckered a little further southwest. He has reached the point of no return. He must go south or risk seeing nothing. 